Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. So, hello and good evening. I welcome you to today's special webinar, Risk and Money Management, how to find the right position size exclusively for JFD brokers. Um, first of all, just a short check whether you can hear me. So if you could type in a, a short yes or everything fine. Ah, perfect. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, perfect. Um, um, picture or my desk can be seen. And um, now what we want to have is we want to have a, a look at a very, very special topic in my personal opinion. So usually in during, during the webinars I hold, um, especially those live trading events or um, the events here, uh, morning meeting. Um, you may might may have seen some uh, in the YouTube channel from from JFT brokers. So from time to time, there are questions like um, there are questions like, hey, what's the right position size, or what risk do you usually take in trading? And uh, this is a very very special question since. Um, the problem here is, it's it, it can't be answered that uh, that that easily. Um, so, you can read lots of trading books, let's say, and uh, usually there is always the same uh, the same um, um, quote. But more not not always, but most of the time the same quote, um, where you uh, where you get the question, hey. Um, What's the right position size? Okay, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital. But now imagine the following. You have a trading um, 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 uh, strategy which has a proven record of, um, I don't know, generating, let's say, a hit rate of 70% and, um, and, and, and um, having a payoff ratio of, say, 3 to 1. Payoff ratio. This is the average winner compared to the average loser, so the ratio of it. And I would definitely answer then, if you risk 1%, this is way, way not enough. You need to risk more on this because what you want is you want to maximize your profits. That doesn't necessarily mean that I, that I now say, hey, you have to gamble when, when you're trading. So gamble in terms of uh, build up position sizes which are ridiculously high to generate as much profit as possible. That's definitely not true. But um, just answering risk 1% of your trading capital is definitely not correct in my, from my personal point of view. And uh, this is, um, if you want, a very crucial topic and the topic today which we will cover. Before we start, let's have a look here at the risk disclaimer which is usually uh, very important, especially in terms of this topic. Topic. So that trading foreign exchange and CFDs on margin uh, carries a high level of risk and the discussed products here, so FX, spot FX products, respectively CFDs, may not be suitable for all investors. Um, and now let's come back to, uh, to one of the um, webinars I held several weeks ago um, where I said, well, I want to present you my three columns of profitable trading. And those three columns of profitable trading they cover risk and money management, trading psychology, and a strategy with an advantage. And um, now the thing is that I um, I'm told the audience back then uh, that the moment he, one column is missing here, you usually have a big problem since all those columns interact with each other. So um, let's, let's take a short look back here, for example, at risk money management and trading psychology. Just imagine the following, the example I just made, just remem remember that. So I said you have a hit rate of 70% and you have a payoff ratio of uh, 3 to 1, so the average winner is three times as big as the average loser. And now um, the thing is, that I said, well, if you're risking 1% on this strategy, it's definitely not enough. You need to risk more per trade. But just imagine that you can't risk more than that. And it's a very simple idea behind this. So from a risk money management perspective here, um, um, it's definitely not enough to risk just 1%. But from a trading psychology perspective, it could make sense. Since just imagine the following. <clears throat> so um, you somehow get money from somewhere and someone gives you, let's say, 250,000 euros. It's just, you just get the amount. Um, I don't know, your, your grandmother says, hey, here, I just made some, I, I just booked some profits on Amazon or something. Um, it's for you. Here's 250,000 and just uh, make something out of it. And you think, wow, grandmother just made uh, 
um, some some big money trading Amazon um, for some years and well why not trading here and, and try to make something more out of this and now but you you just uh, um, someone who has a, a nine to five job somewhere and you make let's say I don't know working 40 hours a week two and a half thousand let's say three thousand you make three thousand euros a month um, net and therefore you have to um, um, to pay your rent and everything okay so now imagine the following you um, have someone saying okay per trade risk 1% of those uh, 250,000 you, you probably you have everything you have a strategy you have an idea you just back tested it so everything's fine here from this per perspective in terms of a strategy with an advantage and now it comes to risk and money management and trading psychology um, risk and money management there you have just um, you have the, the strategy with an advantage and you try to capitalize it as, as good as possible and here you find out that with the um, uh, the idea I will um, um, present to you a little later in this webinar um, you should risk let's say three percent per trade because the advantage of this uh, of this strategy is big enough to um, to say well three percent risk is perfect um, to make as much capital out of of this or as, as much money out of the strategy while you are capable of holding potential drawdowns quite small so okay great now you say three percent of uh, 250,000 even just imagine you, you're just risking one percent even if it makes makes sense somehow from a psychology uh, from psychology psychological standpoint to risk two and a half thousand just imagine the following you have a trading system which is um, I don't know trading the open in the DAX or something on a five minute time frame so every morning between 9 and 11 however you will get this job done since you have to remember you have a 9 to 5 job so probably such a strategy is not very suitable with your current lifestyle and your current job um, and um, nevertheless so you you you're you you read that you, that you have to risk one percent here. Um, you're not, let's say, you're not an expert on risk and money management here on optimizing your position size. So you're risking two and a half thousand, and then you're in a trade where you're nearly risking as much as you usually make working one month. Okay, forty weeks, uh, forty hours a week, so one hundred sixty hours a month, and now you're risking nearly the whole amount here. Um, in one trade, let's say, which usually has a duration of something like probably one hour, okay? So you're trading the open range breakout um, where you just say, okay, I duplicate the open range and that's it. So it's probably just one hour, if not less than that. And you're, you're usually like make or break. So you make more out of your money and in terms of, of, of a payoff, you probably make, um, um, Oh, well, that's a problem. That's a problem. So you usually make three times as much as you're risking. So usually you're making then uh, three times or uh, three multiplied with 2,500. It's one percent of 250,000, um, and um, you're you're hitting this seven times. Just imagine that um, seven out of ten doesn't necessarily mean you're winning all the time. So seven out of ten means you can easily lose the first three hits here four five times ten times a row just imagine you have a have a, a bad run here and um, you're losing two and a half in less than one hour and usually you're working one month to get this uh, amount of money to pay your rent and, and, and feed your family and everything so here already a psychological problem will uh, uh, come into play because just imagine you're sitting there do you really think that you're capable of letting winners run to hit your take profit three times, which is then generating an average winner three times as high as your average loser? I think the answer is just no. Now imagine that your that your um, knowledge about risk and money management is really advanced. You're professional really, and you have a strategy with a with an advantage here, saying, "Hey, risk three percent, and you get the optimal capital growth here." And now you have to risk more than two times what you usually make working one month. I mean, at the end you have to say, "Okay, there's the question: Do I really want to work in a job here?" Um, which is just making me three three thousand a month when I can make um, a multiple of this. I'd say, well, it depends on your on your personal uh, uh, risk um, aversion. Um, but all in all, usually you should stick to your job. Let's let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, but now you're risking more than more than two times, two and a half times as much as you're usually making working one month, uh, one hundred sixty hours. So 
I bet that there will definitely be a, um, a trading psychological problem rather sooner than later. Just imagine you're losing this amount of money. Are you really that cool to say, okay, well, just lost one trade, no big deal. You lose the second one, boom, you just lost nearly half of a year of work. Okay, it's seven and a half plus seven and a half. This is making fifteen thousand. You just lost fifteen thousand. You're usually working five months to make fifteen grand. Um, you just lost it in less than two hours of trading. You will definitely have a psychological problem with that. And so this is something where you can perfectly see already, and you can do all those those uh, simple examples here. You can see how those columns interact with each other here. And now the thing is that you already that you can already see that you need to to be really careful, but just say, okay, I I got the um uh, the the theory behind this. So just listening to this webinar now, saying, hey, wow, this is a great formula. I can work with this. And then you think, well, now you're the grandmaster of risk and money management, and you can easily adapt this to your trading strategy strategy and just run through it, um, this won't work since profitable trading consists of those three columns which are interacting with each other, which means you definitely not just need to master the theory behind this risk and money management um, 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 topic here, for example, in terms of the position size, and we're not, we haven't spoken about risk of ruin and expected value and risk, of re uh, risk or reward. Uh, I'm sorry, risk reward, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, but you need to also master trading psychology. Also, you have to master strategy, um, finding a strategy, uh, formulating a strategy with an advantage. Um, and you have always to remember that all those columns, they interact with each other. And so let's come to the, uh, to the next um, column. Um, this is what we remember based on everything I just said. Is one column missing? Being profitable in your trading is nearly impossible since all columns interact strongly with each other. In our case today, risk and money management and trading psychology. So this is obvious. So working respectively trading with an adequate position size has consequences on the mental stability of the trader, which makes perfect sense, by the way, just as, as I described, since the position size, which is far too big, will lead to a behavior of fast profit taking. Prof well, I'm sorry, fast profit taking and letting losers run. So just imagine you know that your approach is highly profitable, but you say, well, I just made two and a half here on this trade. I just take the, uh, I just take the, uh, the winner. Since usually you work one, uh, you, one month to make those 2,500 euros. But now your, risk, uh, your, your trading strategy says you have to risk 3%. So your average winner um, becomes one third of your average risk and average loser, which will turn a profitable trading approach into a losing one. Um, and so now the right position size, and this is something you have to understand here, um, has to, to make sure two things. So the first one is it should keep potential drawdown small. So um, I'm, I'm not just I'm not just um, I'm, I'm someone who's trading in markets um, um, and and making some research and uh, some somewhere educating people and giving them some input here on um, how they can uh, find their their own path in in the trading world. But I'm also a money manager myself. So um, I'm managing clients' funds. They give money to me and I manage it for them. And now imagine the following: I have an approach which is profitable. And I, I'll look for, for the, 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 the perfect position size here, but I have to make sure that the drawdowns here, the clients face, um, are all the time are small and in, within a range which is um, uh, written down in the contract with the clients. So in my case, for example, I say, well, I'm not um, losing more than 25% of your money. So just imagine you have a client who gives you 100,000 euros and you say, okay, the maximum drawdown here is 25%, meaning the um, loss the client faces is uh, a maximum of 25,000. So usually it could be higher, um, or not, not usually, I'm sorry, um, not usually is the wrong word. Um, sometimes, sometimes it could be higher um, because Let's imagine you have some kind of slippage in the market. So there are no quotes. Um, remember the S&B, for example. So usually this won't happen to me, but I can guarantee it. Since I'm not trading illiquid markets, like, for example, Euro Swiss franc going uh, aggressively long against 120 here, I'm, I'm not trading those kinds of markets. So usually I'm, I'm, I'm trading deep 
and 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 uh, very deep and very liquid um, um, titles or assets in general. So not just um, indices or or um, um, uh, commodities, but also um, spot FX. So making sure that if you here um, have the major pairs like EURUSD, GBPUSD, as currently by the way here, I give you give you a short example being a Euro GBP short here. Um, I make sure that I'm trading major currency pairs where do I don't have make big problems finding enough liquidity even if the liquidity thins out. Just imagine what happened here um, in terms of, of the um, um, French election is, is a big topic again next Sunday and uh, the last time here we, um, we saw the first round or the, 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 um, the results of the first round, um, we had a gap up. In the in the currency markets, especially here, as you may remember, this is Euro USD in this case, and we gapped up aggressively. That's a four-hour chart; it's not 50-minute. But um, here we've seen a gap, and that was that was quite huge. I mean, we have to remember that the market went up 200 pips from here, is stabilizing currently here. By the way, now facing a very very interesting region around 0950. If we break above this level, I bet that we have a good chance to run up to 110. Um, but oh, as already mentioned in today's morning meeting. I'd say that we have to be a little careful here uh, if this move is sustainable since I expect already um, Macron to win. So I mean I'm Euro GBP short so somehow you, you can uh, understand, everyone will understand from pure speculative positioning here I hope that Le Pen wins since I then think uh, Euro will go to hell <laughs> and being short Euro I think is the best trade ever especially probably against your, um, GBP since most of market participants are um, currently short the GBP. So this is something you can see in the Commitment of Traders report. But um, on the other hand, it's more realistic to think that Macron will win the election. And most of this win is probably priced in. So meaning that if we get to see such a break, this is not a sustainable move. But it's also not the topic of this webinar here. Um, so the thing is, if you have such a deep and liquid market, um, well, you do not have such big problems, especially when, when holding the position size in an adequate range here. And even if then there are brutal moves, they are usually not that brutal that you're getting um, um, or that you're facing a loss which is big enough to, um, to, to wipe out your account if you, if you know which position size you have to, to find here. So in that way I can guarantee for example for my clients that I want to, to keep, or that I will keep potential drawdown small. Nevertheless a client doesn't give me the money to make sure that I'm not losing it but the client wants to have that, that, that he's making more money so he wants to see an optimal growth of the equity curve that's why he gives the money to me um, I mean not, not trying to lose anything is, is fine is great and I think um, if if I try to do that for the clients I'm still miles ahead of my competitors since uh, most of them are really just focusing on on the optimal growth of the equity curve here but nevertheless I can fully understand that the client says hey I still want to see some some return for my risk or for the risk you are taking and um, so the right position size has to make sure that those two things are in focus and so what we want to do today is we want to ignore one and take a look at two so what I will present to you does not focus on potential drawdowns. Nevertheless, probably I have to add here, I already worked in some small ideas how you can face from two than on one to, to have a more stable and, and more solid ground you can find the right position size for your trading on. So one possibility here is to use the so-called caricaturion. You may, might have heard about it. Um, Kelly answers this question, how can I uh, create the optimal growth of my equity curve if I know certain parameters of my trading strategy? So Kelly itself is really rough and doesn't find its uh, roots in, in trading but in gambling. Um, my, myself, I, I, have to, I have to admit that I am a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not just a trader but I'm also um, a very uh, avid not gambler but poker player and um, so if you're playing poker you also try to find um, edges in other games like roulette or in this case uh, 21 or blackjack and um, so Kelly um, built this this criterion here um, I think in combination I think he was good friends with Ed Thorpe. Ed Thorpe is one of the um, yeah 
most legendary uh, hedge fund traders of all time. He was um, he was a trader who um, ran a hedge fund here on a statistical arbitrage. And as you, as you may know, um, if you're um, trying to to trade arbitrage and and if you if you if you try to capitalize on that, the winnings are just usually they are very small. So you have to somehow leverage it. And you may remember long-term capital management, LTCM, the big hedge fund, which nearly collapsed the whole financial uh, system in 1998, um, back when, when the, the Russia crisis hit. And uh, they were also, some said, um, and I think they are right with that, they said they were picking dimes in front of a bulldozer. And um, I think they're completely right with that, but they nevertheless, they had a big return here and they made money um, with, with small advantages. They used leverage and that was then the problem when uh, markets became more volatile and dried out and liquidity thinned out and they couldn't find uh, buyers or sellers for the other side of their trades. And um, so that was the idea behind um, um, uh, or, one of the one of the strategies here is to find the right position size to 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 capitalize on those um, small advantages you might find and Kelly answers it really well and so um, it finds its roots in in gambling and in blackjack but can be adapted to trading and um, this is what we want to do today so the Kelly formula itself is really really rough um, and uh, very simple so it's uh, F equals to 2 multiplied with P and you uh, subtract 1 and there you go. Okay, so now we have to know what's F, what's, uh, what's P. So F is the amount you're risking per position and percent and P is the hit rate. Um, you see immediately that this formula here is definitely not enough for trading, for, for our trading. So we want to have, first of all, we want to have a short example here, uh, but then we want to adapt this formula a little. We want to, to upgrade it and make it, um, make it um, more handsome for our trading. So the example is if the hit rate of the system is 60%, Kelly says to get the optimal growth of your equity curve, you have to risk F you multiply uh, equals 2, you multiply 0.6, 60% with 2, you subtract 1 and you get 20%. So he says the hit rate of your system is 20%, great, so risk 20% of it and you're fine. Just imagine I would say to you, hey, you have a 100,000 euro account, um, your hit rate in your trading is 20%, okay, 60%, uh, um, I'm sorry, so you, riff, you, you risk based on Cali 20% of it. So per trade, you go for 20% risk, which means uh, you're risking 20,000. Hmm. What would you say? I think you would say, okay, no. <laughs> and uh, this is exactly the thing here. Um, and uh, the main reason for that is the formula has to be modified. By the way, you, you, can, you can start playing around with it a little. Just imagine the hit rate is 40%. What happens? It happens the following. So you multiply 0.4, you get 0.8 here, minus 1, you get minus 0.2%. You get minus 20%. Um, you can't risk minus 20% of your, of your trading capital. Meaning that Kelly here is just capable of, of um, um, can be used just in case the hit rate is bigger than 50%. Um, for example, my personal trading approach, I do not have a hit rate of bigger than 50%. Sometimes I have, but more of the, most of the time, it's below that level. So it's between 40 to 45%. Um, and uh, this is exactly the thing here. Um, based on this um, rough formula, I can't use Kali in my trading, but, or that's why I have to adapt it a little. Um, so the formula has to be modified since it completely ignores a very important aspect in your trading, the so-called payoff ratio. So um, I just found out, when I was, when I was working, um, before I, I founded my own company and, and started, by the way, working exclusively for JFT Brokers, I built up um, daily effects um, for, for FXCM here in Germany, in Austria and Switzerland. You uh, might have heard that uh, daily effects then was sold to IG Markets in, I think it was October, was it October, was it November, I'm not sure, but it was definitely sold for 40 million to, to IG Markets. Um, um, also the German part, so it included all um, uh, departments worldwide and um, it shows somehow already the value of this of this brand here and um, during a call 
several years ago, there was a meeting um, between the Dell FX analysts here, and uh, there were also my U.S. colleagues back then in this call, and um, um, we were talking about um, 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 webinars we could hold or, or articles we could write, and um, I was um, I was referring to the payoff ratio. No one got my point. So not just in the U.S., but also in the U.K., but also in in France, for example, in Italy. Everyone said what. What is payoff ratio? And um, so I have to make sure that everyone really gets this point. So the payoff ratio is the average winner to the average loser. Um, it, it's a very similar number you might find in the English uh, um, uh, dictionary here. It's called profit factor. But I just found out that profit factor doesn't really um, um, is or gets the meaning of, of payoff ratio. So. Um, just to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, so payoff ratio is here the average winner and uh, um, you divide it by the average loser. And you usually have to look that this number is bigger than one. I could um, easily show you a chart here showing that the higher the payoff ratio, the less the chance that you're uh, getting broke with your trading. So um, risking, you, um, reaching your point of risk of ruin. And um, so what, what here the, the uh, so-called, um, let's call it modified Kelly formula does is you have the hit rate and you subtract the loss rate divided by the payoff ratio. So here's also an example. Um, the hit rate of the system in this case is 40%. So as in my trading, for example, and on average we are making three times more when we win as when we lose. So average winner is uh, divided to, um, by the average loser is 3 here. So the payoff ratio is 3 to 1, respectively 3. So if you fill in those numbers, you already have, by the way, the, the, the loss rate. If the hit rate is 60%, I'm sorry, it's 40%, then the loss rate is 60%. You're taking out break-even trades here completely. And um, so, yeah, well, you fill in those numbers. You have 0 0.4 minus, and then um, you fill in those numbers, 0 0.6 divided by three, and you're already risking another 20% on your traded capital. But, and there you can see, where is this, this uh, a number from a, um, um, a few minutes coming from? So by the way, that was the setup for the Dow Jones uh, in the German version of JFT Live Trading TV. Just let, let's have a look if it works out or not. Before I divide, okay, unfortunately it doesn't, <laughs> unfortunately it doesn't. So the setup was this. I said, I'd, I'd really like to see uh, a test of this region here, nine, 970, 980, but the market already uh, here, he didn't even make it back above the close from yesterday, 950, but uh, from there drifted lower and made new lows. It's not a sustainable move, but nevertheless, the setup here wasn't triggered, so I have to, uh, I have to, to delete it. Um, but now, let's remember what I said. I said the hit rate, and I said, you're definitely not fine just risking 1%. Well, if the hit rate is 70%, um, so the loss rate is 30%, taking out, again, the fact that, um, uh, that, that, that there are also break-even trades, so where you're plus minus zero, um, and the payoff ratio was three to one, okay? So let's, let's now fill it in here for Kelly. Um, Kelly says it's F, the amount you're risking in percent, then you have the hit rate, 70, it's 0 0.7, you subtract 0 0.3 through 3. So here, just to double check if it's correct, obviously it is, okay? So here hit rate, there you have the loss rate and you divide it by 3. And you get 0 0.7 minus 0 0.1, 0 0.6, it's, oh, I'm sorry, here, 60%. So what you should do is you should risk more than 50%, 60% of your trading capital uh, with Kelly here. If you have such a, such a huge hit rate um, with such a phenomenal payoff ratio, which is really good, by the way, this is, this is really, this is, if you can, if you uh, um, can can find someone who's generating such a such a hit rate, and uh, you plan to run a hedge fund or something, well, get this trader as your head of trading, and you'll you can retire. So <laughs> that's just just was it what 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 these numbers mean? And um, so, but nevertheless, sixty percent is just too much. 
okay, so fr from from a trading perspective, even for a very aggressive trader, 60% is just too much. And um, nevertheless, you might wonder why, why is, it hap is this happening since Kelly does exactly that. It ignores potential drawdowns. And um, so what you can do here is you can simulate examples. So what, what you could do, for example, I can, I can show you. This is something I haven't prepared. I just remembered it several seconds ago. So one second. What is it? Um, yeah, I think it's here. I think this this should this should work. Oh, I'm not sure. Probably no, no. Let's do it. Let's let's do it the other way. Um, I I had it already. One one second. Let's take let's take the other. I think it's uh more. It's a better one since it also already has the risk of reen, so the risk of going broke with your trading. And um, so one second here. So you can fill in the numbers, the accuracy. So you have a hit rate of seventy percent. The average win and payoff ratio is three. So this number here, expectancy, means that you're making uh, one euro eighty cents for every euro you're risking. Now I say I have a trading uh, um, capital of of, of twenty thousand here, which what I start with, and then I have a fixed risk. Let's call it sixty percent. Okay, fixed percentage risk here. Um, this is a ridiculous high number. And you say the percentage of drawdown is the green, so 100%. You're, you're saying, I don't stop trading even if I have lost, let's say, 60% or something, but I keep on trading. And now if you simulate the risk, it's nearly 100 oh, No, it's not. So this is the great thing about this, okay? So you can get lucky, but I will bet that there will be, if, if we hit this button often enough, um, there will be a time when we'll hit the risk of ruin. Just to, to show you here, this is a ridiculous high amount of numbers you're simulating it. So you're saying, um, what I, I have a winner or I have a loser. It's uh, like, it's so-called Bernoulli uh, distributed Monte Carlo simulation. And uh, this is exactly what's, what's happening here in this example. And as you can see, um, you can't even read the number here, but you can make out of nothing with, with 20,000, you can make over 20 million. Okay? Um, and it's just to give you an idea of if this is really, uh, is, if this is a good approach. So far, um, you haven't had any times where you had two losers, uh, two losers in a row here at the beginning, okay? But it's, it's really, really high risk to, to risk that much money. And what you can't see here, what you can't see is the drawdowns, which are usually quite high. And this is something I, I prepared here. So I work with a way more um, um, conservative approach here, saying um, we have a hit rate of 30% and uh, average winner of 150 euros and the average loser of 50 euros. You can easily um, scale this up to 1,500, 1, 15,000, and then scale up here, 500, 5,000. It doesn't really matter. I was really cons conservative here with the hit rate of 30%. And then you see the following. So you see um, a simulation you can easily do without having such a pro tool as I have. You can easily do this here with, um, with, with uh, Bernoulli distribution in Excel. And uh, you can easily run this here. So one is a winner, zero is a loser. And then you, you just type in, this is the average winner, the expected outcome here. Um, if you win, the expected outcome if you lose. And then you can easily duplicate this. And now the thing is, um, what's the position size with the modified Kelly formula? So that's, by the way, the thing. So what, what you already see here is um, you're risking, and I'm working here with a 5,000 euro account. So what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm 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 losing one percent, and uh, that was that was the main reason I was focusing on that. But here's already you can already see you can already see that here there were some bigger drawdowns. So if you trade up the account to one thousand euros or buy one thousand euros, you're already ahead nearly twenty percent. So if you're now pushing it up to another let's say one thousand five hundred, you're um, ahead well nearly something like. 30% and then you're going down from here down to zero again okay but what could possibly happen is that this drawdown happening here after some successful trades that this drawdown happens at the beginning and now just imagine the following you're not risking 1% but 
but you're risking here in this case you're risking Kelly and the position size you can you can easily calculate and in this in this case here what you can see is that you have a hit rate you subtract the loss rate you divide it by the payoff ratio and then you have a risk of 70 percent per per position and what I did here is um, suggest we have a 50,000 euro trading account 7% risk per trade is probably too big even if you're a very aggressive trader and can handle emotional swings in your trading account well. So you could easily run this simulation here with 7% and see what, what's happening. But what I, what I want to do right here is um, do a more um, practical and less theoretical approach and show you that you can adapt Kelly um, um, to, to the real world a little better. So and considering potential drawdowns. And uh, what you could do is the following. So for example, you, dis you reduce the risk of REIN, so the so-called max drawdown, max DD, you're willing to take, and when you stop your trading and overlook um, what's going wrong, um, by 50% from initially 100,000%, well, that means that you could easily reduce the risk of REIN by 50% if you, if you go down to 25,000. So you're saying, basically, um, I'm having a 25. I'm having a 50,000 euro trading account, and the moment um, I will stop trading is exactly the moment when I lost 25,000 euros. So that means in this case, for example, that you're not risking 7% anymore, but you're risking 3.5% per position here, and getting your your initial risk per trade down to 1,750 euros per position. So and. Um, a further step to reduce the volatility in the equity curve is to take the square root of the result here. Like you're saying, okay, taking the square root out of 3.5% and you're still risking 1.8% risk per trade. So the great thing about this is, and now you might say, well, great, um, now he had some, some simple tricks and he could easily reduce this by, I don't know, um, and, and just say, okay, I'm risking 1% or something. Um, no, what, what, I try to, what I try to do here is the following. Um, and this is something you can easily simulate. What you see here is by taking out um, half of the risk of REIN here, by not risking everything, but just half of the uh, amount you're, um, um, you're willing to lose, not the whole amount, but half of it, so risking instead of 50,000, 25,000, what you still get is, I think, 75% of the optimal equity growth of Kelly. And this is something which means, so if you're now working through this, you can, I haven't checked out this, I, I don't exactly know how much of the optimal capital growth you get here from Kelly, but you're still way better than the, uh, um, um, than the uh, example here where you just risk 1% of your trading capital. So, and I hope somehow, let's just see, but I think I did it. Yes, it's a simulated example. We go with the adapter position size and see what we get after 500 simulated trades. So, and this, by the way, also something where this this approach here with simulating um, simulating trades uh, um, works out really well. You can get a very very great overview of what you can expect if you trade this approach often enough not just in terms of the capital growth, but also in terms of max drawdown. And this is, by the way, something you can see here. So this example is um, not the 50,000 account, but you take it out one zero here, and you're trading a, a 5,000 euro account. So in red, you have the capital with Kelly. In blue, you have the capital without Kelly. Obviously, the red one is outperforming, especially here in a, in a very favorable market environment, is, is outperforming the blue uh, chart, the blue graph here, um, with like, like nothing, so it's, it's just running straight up. But the thing is, and this is something you have also to remember, you're already quite aggressive, and we are trading, by the way, with an approach which is not 7%, not 3.5%, but you also take the square root out of 3.5%, so you massively reduce the potential chances of a drawdown, and you're still, in this case here, pushing up the account after less than 100 trades by nearly 60%, and losing all of it 100 rates later. So you're not trading in the in the uh, negative territory here, but you're losing most of the winnings here already. So this is, by the way, also something which is uh, where, where trading psychology is coming into play. Trading psychology here in terms of behavioral economics, behavioral finance, you may have read one of the greatest books uh, in terms of trading, which has nothing to do with trading at all, 
um, the so-called, wait one second, uh, thinking fast, thinking slow from Kane, Kahneman, uh, Kahneman, well, however, uh, where is it? Okay, one second, thinking fast and slow. So if I can recommend a book on trading, I definitely recommend this one. Thinking fast and slow uh, in terms of behavioral economics are um, one of the great things about this is first of all you uh, you can you can really find yourself in this book because there are so great examples in it that you will easily say well this is exactly me when I'm doing this or that also in terms of trading and um, there's also a, um, a chapter here covering the so-called um, risk aversion and that losing uh, hurts twice as much as winning does and um, just imagine the following so if you're going down here from 3,000 plus so 60 percent so you're starting with your with your initial capital of uh, 5,000 uh, euros and you're going down here from 60 percent plus 3,000 plus to to uh, to zero again it it feels like as if you're uh, behind 1,000 euros so also from trading psychology perspective this is really interesting but just imagine the following so you just traded up your account um, from five to eight thousand and now you're going down in less or around 100 trades you're going down to five thousand again so just to give you um, an idea of that losing three thousand from eight thousand means that your drawdown is three thousand and you divide it by eight thousand it's thirty seven point five percent okay 37.5% drawn on. And now I can tell you something from a money manager perspective, for example, um, you won't find much investors who are willing, um, who are willing to, to, uh, to lose 40%, nearly 40% of their equity. So if they're giving 100,000 to you, just imagine you're losing 20,000. They are going, they are they're going up a wall okay they're they're furious they don't want to lose anything you're the pro and you have to make money out of this it's trading and it's part of a part of trading is you have to lose money but it's also it's no not also but it's every time a question of the relation and um, the moment you're losing let's say 20 percent and at the end of your year at the end of the year you're ahead 20 percent well um you will find out that the investor isn't isn't really uh, a plus to see that even if you say, hey, it's 20%, he says, well, I was behind 20%. So uh, next time, please avoid this. And sure, you can, you can easily um, um, do those, those simulations here and tell him, hey, if I do this often enough, well, rather sooner than later, once or twice a year, um, I will get out 100% for you. But, and this is exactly the thing, as already said, losses hurt twice as much as do winners and this is exactly the reason why you have to make sure that you uh, that you that you're aware of the risks and, and, and aware of the maximal draw maximum drawdowns you could face when um, trading with a too high position size here yeah and so that's exactly um, um, the thing um, what you have to remember if you look at such uh, simulations and at such charts here the blue line looks okay now even though after 500 trades you're still ahead way above 50 percent but in case of the or 80 percent but in case of the of the red line well you're ahead 200 percent and 200 sounds way better than just in this case 80 percent here even though 80 percent of the 500 trades is awesome this is great um, but now but this is exactly the thing what you can also see here is that drawdowns are potentially potentially way bigger um, and uh, this is something where trading psychology and this aspect comes into play. So now the summary of, of all this. The Kelly Kutcherian is giving you the chance to find out the optimal position size for an optimal growth of your equity curve while ignoring potential drawdowns. Okay, so this is something very important to note here um, and exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of this webinar when I said, well, um, I will give this to you, but please make sure that you, that, that you really understand that Kelly ignores potential drawdowns you're facing, and the drawdowns are getting higher the moment you're risking more of your trading capital. And this is something you have always to remember when trading bigger position size. So you have to find an approach, you have to backtest it, 
um, you really have to test it through several market conditions. And if you found an approach which is which is doing well and performing well, well then you can start to optimize the position size and see whether you're risking more or less. And um, if you did this, if you did this, well, then from there you can uh, you can you can move on and see whether um, with with a forward test, let's say, small uh, account you're opening and you run a strategy um, that you then say, okay. Um, I try a bigger position size, Kelly justifies a bigger position size, and I'll, I'll see whether I can deal with it from a mental perspective. Um, so this is something, or this is a probably approach which is, which is quite good. A very important is using Kelly when finding your position size does not mean you get a better performance. That's, by the way, something also you have to remember. So if you look at this chart, you will easily come to this conclusion, say, hey, great, if I use Kelly, I'll double or, or, or make three, four times um, more out of my money, this is definitely not correct. So you're not getting a better performance necessarily, but when trading leveraged products and pushing the envelope here too far, you'll probably face massive drawdowns and potentially kill your account. That was something I just tried to show you here with this with this Excel chart. It didn't work out so well since uh, we became multi, 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 multi millionaires with uh, doing nearly just simulate this 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 accuracy here, the hit rate with this payoff ratio of three one, so accuracy of seventy percent, didn't work out that well. But let's say, well, let's try this. Okay, so fifty percent drawdown. What what happens here? Still work. That's really bad. That's usually happening. You know, you 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 always look for a strategy which is making you uh, a millionaire in no time, and then. So it's as you can see here, you're not even making a 50% drawdown with. Let's try this. Ah, there we go. Okay, so you're pushing up the account here. Um, by what? Uh, you're a millionaire already, so you boom, 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 trading it up, and then you're losing 50% of that here. So you can you can get this. So probably it has something to do. Yes, okay, perfect. It has something to do here with the management, money management approach. So in this case here, I was, I was uh, bringing down the fixed dollar um, risk per trade down to 1,000, which means I, I just you looked for the units. So as you can see, this is a quite great tool here. Um, it's from the book. So the, the, the formula from the book, oh, I just forgot it. I think it was Penfold. I think it was a book from Penfold. Let's let's look it up here. So the uh, the code of this you can you can um, there we go. So that's uh, but by the way, this is this is the the German version of that. It's also there's also. Um, there's also an English version of this book. It's Brent Penfold. And he has the formula to, to, to uh, program this tool here yourself in its book. Um, so, and by the way, I think you can also download it from his website. I'm not sure about that. Um, but nevertheless, what I, what I was talking about is the following. So what he's doing here is not risking 60% what we did, but he said, I have a 20,000 count and I'm uh, having 20 numbers, uh, 20 units of, 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 of risk here making each trade 1,000. And if, you, if you're doing this, uh, in this case here, risking 5% of your trading capital each trade, well, you can't nearly lose. You won't make it 5% down from here or risking or 50% from here, probably 10%. Uh, I mean, the lower the run on you're willing to accept, the more risky a strategy of, in this case, risking 5% of your trading capital gets. But even here, it's, it's a, yeah, there we go. Okay, worse. So in this case, for example, here, we lost two times in a row. Happens. I mean, if you have a hit rate of 70%, you can easily lose two trades in a row. And then you're, you're hitting the max drawdown here, but losing 10% while risking 5% per trade is not that surprising, let's say. And this is, this is exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about here. So the higher you trade with leveraged products here, and the, the more you push the envelope, and probably you push the envelope too far, you will definitely face a massive drawdown and potentially kill your account. This is something you have always to remember here. And the potential solution is that you're trading one part of your trading capital aggressively with Kelly, for example, and the other part more conservatively. Let's say you're having, I don't know, 10,000 to your, to your name or 50,000, and then you say, I, I trade 10% um, with Kelly, 
case of a 50,000 account, you're trading uh, 5,000 euros here with a Kelly approach and very, very aggressively. And the other 90%, um, uh, um, so 45,000, you traded more um, conservatively. And nevertheless, you can, if you're, if you're uh, running hard and if you're, if you're doing well, um, you can easily um, um, uh, generate a great um, 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 yield here on your 10% while trading Kelly here, for example. And um, on top of that, yeah, Kelly perfectly shows that you need to have a trading strategy. And that's something which, which, which you definitely ha need to have with a positive expected value, respectively having an edge here, since you don't get a Kelly optimized position since you do not have such a strategy. So meaning, if you do not know your hit rate, if you do not know your payoff ratio, and if you didn't test your strategy before, well, you can't you can work with Kelly, meaning, and this is the great thing about this topic somehow and the Kelly telling itself, it, it solves a big problem many, many traders have. They do not have a trading strategy. And um, so if you want to use Kelly in your trading, um, and if you now say after this, this, this short wrap-up of this topic here, well, this is such, such a great thing, um, I really want to, 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 to prove uh, or not proof, but but I want to work with Kelly and somehow find uh, another way of finding the right position size in my trading. You have to find a strategy first, and you have to know what are uh, yeah what are the key um, 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 parameters parameters here the the key the key numbers like hit rate like the payoff ratio um, because if you do not have them you can't use Kelly in your trading. Yeah, and so that's it from my end. I hope you uh, enjoyed this this uh, small presentation on this topic. And um, if you want uh, more of, of, of JFD Brokers, just check out the website. Um, respectively, if you want to contact me, um, you find my email address here. You can also contact me via, via Twitter. Um, and tomorrow, there will be the morning meeting at 9.30 a.m. GMT. One second, there was a question. If I can share the XFR, yes, sure. If you if you want, you just shoot me a mail. Just shoot me a mail, and I'll send it over to you. No 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 problem. Um, since it can be found in the internet for free, um, and so you can easily, uh, yeah, you can you can easily get it there. But well, we can you can uh, you can avoid uh, searching it via Google. Just shoot me a mail. No problem. Um, yeah, and so that's it for my end. Happy trading. Watch your stops and. Um, have a nice evening. Talk to you tomorrow then at 9.30 a.m. GMT in the English version of the morning meeting. I look forward to it. Um, have a nice evening and uh, talk to you tomorrow. See you. and Bye-bye.